Good evening and welcome to Parish Prayers and Beyond. It's good to be here with you on this Wednesday evening. I want you to know that come Sunday, guess what? There is a place for you to sit. There's even a place here to sit. There's even a place, if you really want to sit way in the back, a place for you. We have room for you to come and worship the Lord. We hope that you will do that someday. Come and visit with us. Just come and see what we're all about over here at the First Baptist Church of Winsboro. Well, last night, not last night, but last Wednesday, we talked about holiness. Holiness. Holiness is, is one of the biggest characteristics of a Christian. It's one of the biggest characteristics of a child of God. Holiness, being like God Himself. Holiness, being pure, being in relationship with God in such a way that you reflect His presence in your life. Holiness. In Revelation chapter 4, verse 8, we find these words, And the four living creatures, each one of them having six wings, are full of eyes around and within. And day and night they do not cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. Now, when you hear a word repeated in the Scripture, it's for emphasis. And it, it might be like when your mother told you to do something and she had a little irritation in her voice. She said, would you please take out the trash? And you said, yes, yes, yes. Or you, know, or you repeated yourself to make sure she heard you and understood. You wanted the emphasis there. You wanted her to know. You heard her. You're going to do it and you're going to do it now. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Well, the same is true in the Scripture. When you see a word repeated, maybe when Jesus said, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, He's bringing some emphasis to what He's about to say. And so that's what's happening here. These, these creatures, these four living creatures said, Holy, holy, holy. Oh, emphasizing the holiness of the Lord. The Lord is holy. When He revealed Himself to Moses and Isaiah, there was much fear and trembling in their, uh, in, in their hearts and in their lives there. <laughs> There's a, there was a deep and overwhelming respect and reverence and awe when confronted with God Himself. Remember what happened to Moses? Remember his encounter? Let's look at it in the Scripture. Uh, he stumbles across a burning bush while he's tending cattle. And this bush is not burning up. It's on fire, but it's not burning up. And he's like, whoa, what's going on here? Exodus chapter 3, verse 3. So Moses said, I must turn aside now and see this marvelous sight, why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, Do not come near here. Remove your sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said also, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses hid his face, and he was afraid to look at God. You see, I, these encounters, uh, he made it very clear who he was. And when Moses realized it was the God of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he knew who he was in the presence of. And he hid his face, the Bible says. Moses hid his face. He was afraid to look at God. He had a holy reverence for God. Something to think about today. Remember when Isaiah encountered God? A, a vision was given to Isaiah, and he, he was looking up uh, to the throne that was in the temple, and he saw that throne upon which the Lord sat, and he said, Woe is me, for I am ruined, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Immediately, Isaiah felt his unworthiness in the presence of such perfection and holiness. When he stood in front of God, there was an immediate, uh, an immediate, uh, what do they call it, inventory of his own life. 
There was an immediate ass, uh, just assessment of what what of who he was before a holy God, and he realized that he was not worthy to be in God's presence. In Revelation chapter 15, verse 4, John writes that he heard the song of Moses sung by those who had won the victory over the beast and his image. Listen to the, what, uh, what some, some, uh, just a few of the words of that song of Moses. Who will not fear, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. Who will not fear, they ask, they sing. Who will not fear? Look, we... Ooh, when we encounter God, when we approach Him, there should be a reverence in our hearts. The holiness of God is so perfect, it's so pure, it's so overwhelming that it causes us to fear Him and, and to immediately compare ourselves with His holiness. Immediately we assess our own lives and we, we throw ourselves up against His and say, oh boy, have you ever seen a nice watch on someone else? Maybe someone with a very nice car or, or a very nice house, and, and immediately you thought to yourself, hmm, mine's not as good as that. Hmm. I think it's a natural human response for us to, uh, you know, to, I think it's a natural human response for us uh, to something that we perceive as being greater than us or something that we may have. You know, we look and we say, wow, that's so much better than us. And we compare ourselves. We, we just automatically, we don't say, oh, look, look, I appreciate what they have. We look and say, oh, hmm, mine's not as good as theirs. When we compare ourselves to others and what they have, that could be considered jealousy. That could be considered covetousness. I wish they did not have it, and I'm, I wish I did. That could be considered in that way. Ah, but in the case of holiness of God, it should be something each child of God longs to emulate and possess. We look at God, and we see His holiness, and we should have a desire inside of us to be just like Him. There should be a desire for us to also be pure and holy. There should be that inside of us. Andrew Murray wrote this, and as we begin to know Him in His infinite righteousness, in His fiery burning zeal against all that is sin, and His infinite self-sacrificing love to free the sinner from his sin and to bring him to his own perfection, we shall learn to wonder at and worship this glorious God to feel and deplore our terrible unlikeness to Him, to long and cry for some share in the divine beauty and blessedness of His holiness. You and I as children of the King must be constantly aware of how close or how far away we are to being like Christ. We must allow the Holy Spirit to convict us of our sin. We must also have a healthy respect, reverence, and fear of God. He is not our pal. Uh, he's not our buddy. God is not our buddy. Uh, approaching Him should affect our blood pressure um, a thousand times more than meeting our favorite celebrity. <laughs> I mean, really, approaching the throne of God should lead us to following Him in holiness. The very phrase that God uses to describe Himself, I am holy, should immediately cause us to ask ourselves the question, am I holy? Am I holy? This is the question we should ask ourselves often, am I holy? Am I holy? Often as daily, maybe even often as hourly. Am I holy? Am I holy? Where do I stand when it comes to the likeness of Christ? God's holiness should cause us to long 
for His holiness. The very fact that He is holy and the very fact that He has called us to be holy should cause us to strive to be more like Him every day. In just a few moments, we're going to have some prayer requests that will appear on your screen. There will be a slide that has 15 seconds for you to pray whatever you want to pray. Talk to Him about whatever you want to talk to Him about. And then there will be some announcements at the end. Again, thank you for joining us. I do want to pray with you before we move into that prayer time together. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this day, and I thank you for calling on us to be holy. Lord, it sets us apart from everybody else in this world when we long and strive to be holy. Father, help us. Help us in our journey to be more today like Christ than we were yesterday. Help us to have that longing for holiness. Lord, we pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are in need. We pray for those who are in need of healing, in need of material possessions. Father, for those who are in need of you, Lord, lead us to, to them. Help us to share you with them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Remember, we care for you. We love you. You think, well, I don't, you know, I don't know you people. You know, it's okay. We love you because God loves you, and you matter to us. You matter to God, too. Come join us at the First Baptist Church. Try us out. See what it's like to worship the Lord here. Again, join us in this prayer time in just a few seconds. It's good to be with you today on this Wednesday. Until next time, take care and know that the Lord is with you. Thank you.